You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. So PET CT, what is PET CT? Well, PET CT is two modalities of imaging. It's a PET scan combined with a CT scan. And um, it's really the only tool uh, that can be used to accurately identify a cancerous lump from a non-cancerous lump in real time. And the way it does that is you're injected with a radioactive uh, isotope uh, that's attached to a sugar. And so because cancers are highly metabolic, in other words, they're constantly growing and constantly eating, and um, it's referred to high, highly metabolic, they will drink up, they'll preferentially drink up more of this sugar radioactive isotope in the surrounding tissue. And therefore um, they will, when you put them under a CT scan, they will glow. So typically what happens is you get injected with this radioactive sugar. Um, you sit around for about an hour or so until it gets absorbed by all your tissues. And then you get, get a CT scan. And so the, the CT scan is usually low contrast. Um, so it's a lower radiation dosage than you'd get from a, a, a single CT scan, which is usually a much higher, more definition. Um, because with uh, PET CT, you're interested in the biological activity and not necessarily the definition of, of the tumor itself. So um, the amount of that radioactive sugar uh, isotope that is drunken up by the tumor is called the SUV, also referred to the serum uptake value. And the higher, more aggressive tumors will drink up more of that and have a higher SUV and um, low aggressive tumors or new tumors um, are going to have a very low level of SUV. So the amount of SUV is really the important thing that you get from a PET scan uh, because a B9 uh, lump will not have a very high SUV. It will be about one or you know, physiological. In other words, it will be about the same, roughly the same uh, activity as the surrounding tissue. Um, inflammation can also cause a very slight increase uh, so it's a, if it's an inflamed lump or a lymph node, it can be slightly increased in SUV, but a cancer is very obvious and it will have a very much higher SUV. The other important thing about it is it's in real time. You don't have to wait four or six months to determine whether it's maybe a cancer or not to see if it's growing. Using growth is a poor way of determining whether you have cancer or not, because you can have a very small tumor that's highly aggressive that has an SUV of uh, you know, 28, for example, uh, and then you can have a very large, uh, very large um, tumor that has a very low SUV and is not likely to metastasize. So an aggressive one is much more likely to cause you problems. And so uh, often we see doctors spending a lot of time uh, focusing on uh, tumors that are not necessarily uh, the important aggressive ones. So interestingly enough, um, when a patient gets a PET CT after their diagnosis, it changes the treatment and or it, it requires the oncologist to modify the treatment in at least 80 to sometimes 90 percent of the time. So we've seen cases and unfortunately we see a lot of cases where patients are told they're cancer free. We'll get them a PET CT and sure enough they have tumors that were not discovered and that's very important because if they had let them grow then they would have metastasized and that would have been a real problem. We've also seen a few cases where patients were being treated with harsh chemotherapy drugs. Uh, you know, we had one example of a lung cancer patient who had a, um, uh, he's on his sixth treatment for a, uh, you know, a deadly lung cancer. And uh, he would, you know, sold his home, sold his business, you know, was basically given up on his life and preparing to die because it was a deadly diagnosis. And when we got in the PET CT scan, we found out that he actually never had cancer in the first place. So he was pretty upset with that. Uh, the oncologist was, well, he should have been happy. <laughs> well, yeah, he was happy that he wasn't going to die, but he was very unhappy that he had literally thrown away his life and sold everything. You know, that's quite a, quite a thing. So anyone with cancer, get a PET CT. Uh, you might have to pay for it privately because we hardly have enough PET CT machines to do uh, our patients. Um, how, many, how many PET CT machines are there in Canada, Michelle? Do you know? Uh, it was about 35, I think. 35, yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, you know, there's maybe 10, 10 of those are private. No, maybe not. Maybe seven 
There's seven okay. private scanners, uh, but it's not uh, in public health care. PET CT is not used for cancer as a rule. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Here in Canada. Yes, but of course. Yes, I apologize. In Canada specifically, in other countries, they have thousands of these machines, and PET yes. CT is used as a standard right. diagnostic tool for cancer. That's why I have this little stat down here at the bottom of the screen. Mm. Um, out of 28 countries with public health care surveyed by the World Health Organization, this includes Australia, UK, Germany, etc. We are 23 out of 28 mm. for diagnostics for cancer because we we don't use some of the things we're going to talk about in a while, but also we don't use the PET, the PET CT imaging. So there's a lot of, of misdiagnosis and a lot of pe people, when we have CT scans, oftentimes it's localized. Um, the PET CT is full body. Full body, yeah. So uh, when we're localizing, just assuming we, you know, we already know where the cancer is, uh, unfortunately, a lot of times metastasis is missed as Alex was saying earlier. Mm. And, um, you know, importantly, uh, it, the diagnosis, as I mentioned, is in real time. So you know right away if it's cancerous or not. You yeah. don't have to wait all that time. Um, well, for, 48 to 72 hours, but that's a massive uh, yeah. shortening of time span from three to six months, which is the necessary time frame for a CT scan yes, exactly. for the comparison. Yeah. Um, and what's there? So back to slide. Yes. Well, actually, you can speak to this. So what, okay. I, what I was talking about earlier was just that the biopsies are an important element of confirming diagnosis, which mm -hmm. obviously did not happen in that lung cancer patient you're talking about. They saw something with a CT scan and they just went for it with treatment. Whereas a biopsy, at least we're getting some tissue from your body. A pathologist is, is running certain tests with that to determine if it is benign, benign or malignant. Yes. Uh, so that's good. Um, but I thought you might want to talk a little bit about uh, biopsies and, you know, what's important to kind of note or know about biopsies uh, in regards to cancer. Yeah, and I think you made an excellent point here, Michelle. Um, I, you know, a biopsy is so integral to accurate diagnosis. And when it comes to precision oncology, um, doing the genetic testing and the expression testing on the biopsy sample is everything. If you don't have a good biopsy sample that is high amount of tumor cells, at least 30% tumor cells in that biopsy sample, um, they're not going to be able to do a lot of a lot with it. And that, um, you know, typically pathology uh, just looks at uh, the type of cancer it is and tries to determine what the type of cancer is. Precision oncology looks at what's caused the cancer what its molecular features are, and that tells you how to treat it. Mm -hmm. So having a good biopsy sample is very important. And a huge problem right now, since we have incorporated precision oncology into practice, um, at least 40, sometimes 50% of the biopsy samples that we get um, are, are of poor quality. They're not high enough tumor content. Um, and that, you know, a big part of that is not using a PET CT before deciding which lump to biopsy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you use a PET CT, you're going to have a better idea of which lump is going to provide you with more tumor tissue based because it's going to have a higher SUV. Mm -hmm. um, so you can pick a better tumor. Um, and we've even seen cases where uh, the tumor is completely missed um, with the biopsy is they just got the wrong lumps. And then, you know, the patient's waiting, still waiting for a proper diagnosis and more time is added to their diagnosis and therefore their treatments put off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, proper imaging and a proper biopsy is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So uh, really, uh, if you're in Canada, um, most certainly ask your doctor, you can ask a GP, you can ask a nurse practitioner or your oncologist if they'll it, order you a PET CT. Don't be surprised if they say no, don't take it personally. Um, and there's lots of reasons for this, which uh, we can get into if you're curious. Um, but, uh, but if they're not willing, um, you can go to a private clinic. There's a, a bunch in Montreal, a bunch in Ontario, um, a couple in BC, uh, and in between, not so much. So, um, but it can be coordinated and the cost of a private PET CT in Canada runs anywhere between $2,000 to $2,500 Canadian. 
So um, that's a small price for all yeah. of the information that it gives you and the accuracy of your diagnosis and treatment. Yeah, it's gone down a lot in price. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.